How to use a walkboard. When used properly, the walkboard prevents painful back injuries that impact first responders. The walkboard allows you to roll a supine patient through tight places, into elevators, downstairs, and more. This video will show you how to maximize the benefits of using a walkboard. Perhaps the biggest challenge when using a walkboard is letting the board do the heavy work for you. First responders are used to muscling through challenges, but with the walkboard, you can minimize physical exertion and pain. The goal is to keep your arms straight, align the patient over the wheels, and let gravity do the work for you. If your elbows are bent, your arms and back are doing work that the walkboard and gravity could be doing for you. To open the footrest, lay the board on a flat surface. Place a knee on the board. Grasp the footrest handle and give the footrest a tug. The footrest will pop out and should be fully open before use. The open footrest is strong but flexible by design. When supporting weight, the angle will be greater than 90 degrees. The angle allows for the natural contour of the patient's ankle. Place your walk board next to the patient. Log roll the patient onto the walk board. And secure the patient to the walk board with straps at the knees, waist, and upper chest. Securing the patient to the board at the knees, waist, and upper chest will maximize the patient's stability during transport. Make sure there is no gap between the patient's heels and the footrest. If there is a gap, the patient will slide during transport. Before lifting a patient, make sure the walkboard is aligned with the path you need to take. Grab the handle in the footrest. Instead of lifting, slide the wheeled end of the walkboard to your path's starting point. Two paramedics can lift a patient by facing each other on either side of the patient's head. With one hand, grip the first opening below the corner. Skip two openings, then use your other hand to grip the next opening. This wide span between your hands will create stability. Face each other and lift with your legs, not your back, keeping your head up and back straight. Lift slowly and at the same speed so the patient does not tip. When the lift is complete, your arms should be straight with locked elbows. To move the patient on an uncarpeted floor, align the patient's center of gravity over the wheels. The patient will be close to a standing position, making them easy to move without heavy exertion. When moving a patient on a carpeted floor, tilt the board back before moving. This will allow you to get the board started in deep pile, padding, and other soft surfaces. Before going downstairs, you will need to transition from two-person to one-person operation. If done incorrectly, the patient could tip. The proper technique is to stop moving the walkboard and lower the board to waist height. Notice how the paramedic's arms are straight, not bent. They are letting gravity do the work. One paramedic maintains a firm two-hand grip, while the other paramedic always keeps one hand on the board throughout the transition. He uses a hand-over-hand -hand approach to move from the side of the board to the top of the board. When he has a firm two-hand grip at the top of the board, the second paramedic may let go. There is no need to lift the walkboard over individual steps. Paramedics simply guide the rate of gravity power descent and steer the path of the walkboard. 
the paramedic at the head of the walkboard controls the rate of descent, while the paramedic at the foot of the walkboard guides the path. By holding the walkboard low with straight arms, the paramedic at the patient's head puts the board at an angle that is similar to the angle of the stairs. This angle allows the walkboard to slide and be pulled forward over each step. The paramedic at the footrest should pull, not lift, the walkboard over each stair. One paramedic places their foot at the base of the walkboard, blocking the path of a wheel and creating a pivot point. The second paramedic lifts the patient to an upright position and then turns the patient. When the patient is facing the intended direction, the board is lowered and the first paramedic removes their foot from the base of the walkboard. Before beginning the cornering process, make sure the pivot wheel is in the right position. If you are on a stair landing, do not begin the cornering process until the pivot wheel is able to go down the next staircase. If you corner too soon, the patient will be in line with the railing rather than the stairs. When approaching the ambulance, you can quickly and easily transfer the patient from the walkboard to a gurney if the patient's condition allows. A slip sheet allows an easy transition both here and at the hospital. A first responder secures the slip sheet and the patient while another responder gently slides the walkboard out. This allows your walkboard to transport additional patients immediately and helps avoid patient bed sores during transport. It also helps prevent back injury to first responders because manual lifting is minimized. Let the walkboard do the work. When used properly, the walkboard will help avoid back pain. The walkboard works well in tight spaces, stairwells, elevators, and mobile homes. It is a valuable tool during mass evacuations and water rescues. Please let us know how you use the walkboard. We're here for you. Ask us questions at any time. Reach us at 866-806-8898 or visit www.walkboard.com.